once we had our rules for differentiation and we had the chain rule, uh, we were then able to calculate derivatives of formulas that had expressions. So instead of x to the n plus 1, if I have any formula raised to a power n plus 1 where n is a constant, uh, the chain rule and the power rule together tell me I can take n plus 1 times that expression to the nth times the derivative of the expression, so the u. Well, this means that I have an antiderivative formula. If I want to do an integral of... Now, I have to have both parts of this because this is my expression. If I have an integral of some formula raised to the n power, and it's multiplied by the derivative of that expression, so it has to be there. I have to have the derivative of that expression. Then, now I divide by the n plus 1, so I have 1 over n plus 1 times that same expression raised to the n plus 1. And so the rule of differentiation and integration for just x, I can generalize it as long as I take into account the chain rule. I have to be sure that u dx is there. And so I get similar behaviors for um, other problems. So the derivative of a logarithm of an expression is the derivative of the expression over the expression, so u prime over u. And that means that if I ever see a problem where I have a derivative of an expression over the expression, I know that the antiderivative, or the family of all possible antiderivatives, is the natural log of the absolute value of that expression, plus an integration constant. And uh, finally, um, we know that if I take a derivative of an exponential to a formula, I get e to the same power, so the same expression, times the derivative of the expression. So the integral formula, if I take, if I see e to a power, and it's multiplied by the derivative of that power, the integral of this will be e to the expression plus the constant. And so when I do problems that involve expressions instead of just x, I need to take into account that derivative, the du dx, the derivative of my expression. So we'll look at some examples now. For our first example, we have an integral of an expression to the fourth power. So what's our expression? Our expression was u was equal to 3x plus 1. And anytime I have an expression, I need to think, what's its derivative? In this problem, it's a 3. So if I had a 3 multiplied here, then I would have the chain rule already, already in appearance. Because we don't, we need to rewrite it. So we're going to say, all right, I'm doing an integral. I have the 3x plus 1 to the fourth. And for the chain rule to work, I needed the du dx, but I need, to, I need to think about if I multiply by 3, I have to undo it by multiplying by a third or dividing by 3. Okay, so what we've done is we've guaranteed that our original expression and our new expression really are the same. And now this is the derivative. And so I can now calculate that the integral... I've got one-third, that's a factor that stays, and then I've got 3x plus 1 to the fifth power times one-fifth. That's the, the power rule with the chain rule, so plus a constant. Um, I'll combine the one-third times one-fifth is 1 over 15, and so I get one-fifteenth of 3x plus 1 to the fifth plus c. Now, 
how do we check our work? We check our work with derivatives. So let's take a derivative, make sure that we did it right. 1 15th of 3x plus 1 to the fifth power. All right, 1 15th is a constant multiple. Um, the power rule says I've got my u. It's going to be 5u to the fourth times my du dx. And 5 times 3 is 15, and so that will cancel, and I get 3x plus 1 to the fourth. And that matches the original integrand. So we found the right, uh, the right antiderivative. All right, so let's look at our next example. I've got uh, an integral of 1 over an expression. Um, and so that makes me think of a logarithm's derivative, right? The derivative of a logarithm's 1 over u, du dx. So here, what do we have? We have our u, our expression, is 2x plus 5. Um, its derivative would be a 2, and we can see that uh, we don't have that derivative in our formula. So we'll rewrite it. We want an integral. We needed it to be a 2 over 2x plus 5, but we can't just change the formula. We have to leave it the same value. So now if I simplify those, uh, 2 and over 2, they would cancel. But now, this is a u prime over u. That's the derivative of a logarithm. So we can write down our antiderivative. The antiderivative of this is 1 half natural log absolute value of my u, 2x plus 5, plus a constant. And we check if I took a derivative of one half logarithm of the absolute value of 2x plus 5. One half is a constant multiple. I've got a u inside a logarithm, so it's going to be 1 over u times u prime. And because those cancel, I get. 1 over 2x plus 5, which is oops, which is exactly my integrand. So we found the right antiderivatives. The last two examples on the handout had um, multiplication of two expressions. Uh, so this first example, I've got the square root of x times x plus 4. Uh, the second problem, I've got x times an exponential with negative x squared inside. Um, now these are going to be treated differently. Uh, in this first example, well so first of all, the only differentiation rule that ends in a product, and just a product, is the chain rule. Um, and so if it's not a chain rule problem, I can't think of it as a product and complete it. I'll have to do something different. So in this first problem, this is not coming from a chain rule. If I thought about um, something inside of a formula, here it's x is inside the square root. The derivative of x is 1, and this is not 1. Uh, similarly, x plus 4, its derivative is 1. And so this product doesn't come from a chain rule. Um, and so what I need to do is I need to rewrite this. I must rewrite. as a sum. And the way that we rewrite it as a sum is I'm going to uh, distribute. So I'll rewrite this and I'll think of that x to the one half so I get, sorry, the square root will be x to the one half times x plus 4 x to the one half. So I've distributed and um, now I'm going to combine powers. So x to the 1 half times x, I've got x to the 3 halves, and I've got plus 4 x to the 1 half. And a uh, comment, 
So far, all I've been doing is I've been rewriting the expression of the integrand. And so notice I still have my integral dx, integral dx. I keep the integral sign until I'm ready to find the antiderivative. And now I'm finally ready to find the antiderivative. I've got a sum. I've got a sum of two powers. And so the sum rule, I can break it up and do one at a time. I've got... Um, in this first problem, my power n is 3 halves. And if I divide that, sorry, if I add 1, let's write that down. My n is 3 halves. So the new power would be 3 halves plus 1 is 5 halves. My second problem has a power of n equals 1 half, and its new power after integration will be that plus 1, which is 3 halves. So my uh, integral is going to be x to the new power, x to the 5 halves, times 1 over 5 halves. That's the reciprocal, so it's 2 fifths. And the second one, it's going to, I've got a 4, that's a constant multiple. I've got x, oops, I wanted to leave some space, x to the 3 halves, that's n plus 1, but I have to multiply by the reciprocal of that power, 2 thirds, and this is an integral, so I have a plus c. So let's simplify this, I get 2 fifths, x to the 5 halves, uh, 4 times 2 thirds, the 4 and the 2 multiply, so I get 8 over 3, x to the 3 halves, plus a constant. And that's my defin indefinite integral. I've got a family of antiderivatives. In our second problem here, uh, the, what's multiplying, I've got an e to an expression. And so if this is going to work, uh, it has to be dealing with this expression. e is raised to the negative x squared. And what's the derivative of that? The derivative is negative 2x. And so when I have my formula, I need to have an e to the u du dx. Uh, and in this problem, I've got my e to the u, but I don't quite have... Um, du dx. It's missing a negative 2. I can fix constant multiples. So let's rewrite this. I've got an integral. I wanted du dx, so let's put negative 2x. I've got e to the negative x squared. So here's my du dx. Here's my e to the u. But I changed the problem, right? I didn't have that negative 2 there, and so I need to correct my problem so that the negative 2 and the minus a half cancel dx, and this is going to be a constant multiple for my problem. Right? I've got um, an integral of e to the u du dx times minus a half. And so when I do the integral, I get that constant stays. I have e to the u, which was negative x squared, plus a constant. Right? If I took a derivative, let's just always, let's double check this, make sure we're thinking right. Negative 1 half e to the u, negative x squared. When I differentiate that, I get negative a half is a constant. I have e to the same u. And I have the derivative of that u. And the negative a half and the negative 2 cancel, leaving me with x e to the negative x squared. That's what my original integrand was. x e to the negative x squared. So we found the right value. And that's how I do indefinite integrals. I'm looking for functions that when I take their derivative, I recover the function in the integral.